This is what a breakthrough in science looks like. For the first time, scientists have grown mouse embryos in an artificial uterus. This contraption is an artificial womb for mice. It's the first of its kind, and it has successfully created dozens of mice embryos from nothing but an initial fertilization. I show you this because it's the first time that we've peered deeply into womb technology. You see, the science of the womb is very complicated. It's something that we've always investigated from afar, doing as much as we can without placing a mother and her child at risk. Until now, replicating a womb allows us to more thoroughly understand the process of creating life, and already this tech is being brought to human trials. Today, the FDA started discussing the possibility of using artificial wombs. This here is a diagram that will most likely be on display during the FDA's consideration of this tech. It's the size of a baby born at just 22 weeks. They're about the size of a sweet potato. Their lungs have yet to fully develop, meaning they can't yet breathe air. Wait, what does this have to do with artificial wombs? I thought we were growing babies from scratch. Well, for humans, we're using this artificial womb tech for the other end of pregnancy, the path to the finish line. We're doing this because it's what is most needed, what would save the most lives. Around a million babies a year die from preterm complications. The ones that make it through an extremely premature birth have a much higher risk of mobility problems, cerebral palsy, hearing impairments, and a slew of other disabilities. This is because when a baby is born prematurely, it requires a complex environment to properly develop and survive. The baby is immediately taken into the NICU, the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. Here, the baby is placed in an enclosed incubator that mimics the temperature of a human body. Sensors are attached to the baby, nutrients are delivered through a tube in a vein, they are placed under bilirubin lights, they often need blood transfusions, the list goes on and on and on. And even with all of this, all of these advancements, chances of survival are bleak. For a baby born at 22 weeks, that's a 10 to 20% chance of surviving. This is where artificial wombs could come into play. But right now, they don't look like this, but instead look like this. A company called Viatra Biomedical has successfully constructed an artificial womb for lamb fetuses. And with incredible results, the lambs can survive in the synthetic womb for up to four weeks. The way it works with lambs is similar to its eventual human counterpart. The fetus floats in a clear bio bag surrounded by lab-made amniotic fluid. A tube is attached to the umbilical cord, allowing for blood cycling and nutrition delivery, similar to real-life womb development. This is why artificial wombs are such a big deal. These similarities to an actual womb guarantee a higher likelihood of survival. When a baby is born extremely prematurely, instead of the incubator and the blood transfusions and all the complications that nurses currently deal with, you could place the baby into an artificial womb for four weeks and then transfer the baby to a care unit when the chances of complications are so much lower. Well, perfect. Sounds like we've gotten down the science on creating artificial wombs, right? Soon, women will be given the option to buy a womb instead of carrying themselves. Hold on, not so fast. Making the jump from the end of the term to the beginning of the term is super complex. There's one major issue that gets in the way. It has to do with something that you and I and everyone on earth has, unless you're some sort of alien. It's a belly button. You'll find out why belly buttons make it hard to make artificial wombs in just a sec, but I wanted to pause and remind you that each of these videos take weeks to months of production, so I'd greatly appreciate a like and a sub. Okay, remember belly buttons. Of course, the belly button is where your umbilical cord attached you to your mother before you were born, and this connection plays a major role in the carefully choreographed process that relies on chemical communication between the mother's body and the fetus. It's a dance that researchers still don't fully understand. We don't even know how to deal with the size of the cord. An umbilical cord matches the size of a fetus, starting off tiny and growing as needed. We don't have the technology to build some sort of synthetic umbilical cord that knows how to grow in size. Not only that, there's programming that goes into babies from interactions with the blood supply from a mother is not yet Hold on, have we thought about whether or not we want this technology? Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. There's a raging debate going on about the morality of this technology in the first place, rightfully so. On one hand, you have people screaming that it's an obvious benefit to society. The most clear demonstration of that is these dots. That's 100 dots, quite a bit of dots. Now take that and multiply it by eight. That's 800 women that die from childbirth every single day. 
But even if safety wasn't at all a concern, there's an argument that artificial wombs might improve equality. Data shows that on average, women's earnings drop significantly after having a child, while a man's earnings do not. By removing the physical, social, and financial burden associated with pregnancy, women could have a child without making sacrifice after sacrifice. And while it would be great to see less women in pain or even dying, and to see more equality, is it worth it with the possible outcomes of this technology? Because believe me, there are some scary ones. Like what if there's something that we miss in the complicated multi-factor development of humans? What if we underestimate the importance of a mother's voice, her heartbeat, the conversation that she has? What if the absence of these things affect the baby's psychological development? Now you're left with a group of individuals extremely socially stunted, forced to interact with a world that they don't fully understand and that they're not capable of understanding. Even scarier than that, have you seen this scene? Exactly. If and when this technology is further developed and adopted by an authoritarian government, we could find ourselves in a dystopia pretty quickly. A society in which population control is put in place and the decision to have a child is no longer a decision of your own, but a privilege passed on to you by your government when allowed. So what do you think? Should we pursue advancement in this highly controversial technology because the benefits outweigh the possible negatives? Or should we accept that some things are just meant to remain natural. Let me know in the comments below. Also, check out this other video where I discuss another controversial technology, brain chips.